Hi there, this is Math 8, Unit 4, Lesson 8. How much in each group, Part 1. Let's look at division problems that help us find the size of one group. So here we are inventing a scenario. It says, think of a situation with a question that can be represented by 12 divided by 2 thirds is what? Write a description of the situation and the question. So here we're looking at, we have 12 of something. This becomes our, our group of something. Uh, our larger number here, and we're dividing it into groups of two-thirds, right, or sections of two-thirds. So in one sense, like we said before, we're asking how many two-thirds are inside of 12. So if I had 12 of something, let's say this was a length of 12, I'm asking how many two-thirds sections are going to be in there. So if this is a value of 12, and that was a space of two-thirds, we're asking how many two-thirds are inside of 12. All right, so you can think about maybe this being the length of something, perhaps the length of uh, a rope or length of a ribbon. We've had that before. And maybe you want to cut that rope or cut that ribbon into two-third segments. Maybe this is 12 feet, for example. And you want a ribbon that's only two-thirds of a foot long. Okay, and so you want to know how many sections or how many two-thirds foot ribbons can you cut out of a 12 foot length of ribbon. Right? Does that make sense? So write down some sort of question that you would come up with about what two thirds or a group size of two thirds relates to 12. Okay? I'll let you do that there on your own. And after you've done that, you're going to trade your description with your partner and answer your partner's question. Let's see what you come up with. Okay, let's move down to number two. Called How Much in One Batch. All right, it says to make five batches of cookies, so we're making five batches of cookies, 10 cups of flour are required. How many cups of flour does each batch require? So we're talking about, well, how much does one batch require there? All right, we can write equations and draw a diagram to represent the situation. They help us see that each batch requires two cups of flour. So two cups of flour. So to answer this question, it's two. So why is that the case? We can see here, we can think about it being five times what group size, right? Five batches, five batches times the how many cups of flour, flour per batch will allow me to make, uh, or five batches times two cups is 10 cups of flour. Sorry about that. And here we have 10 cups of flour divided by five batches gives me two cups. That's the numbers there. So we can see in this diagram here, we have 10 cups was our total here, our 10. And because we're gonna be breaking that up into the five batches, we can see we're dividing into the five batches. We're putting the 10 cups evenly into the five batches to find out how much is in one batch, which is the question mark there. So for each question, write a multiplication equation and a division equation, draw a diagram and answer the question. All right, so that's our that's our task there, so here we go. Number one, to make four batches of cupcakes, it takes six cups of flour. How many cups of flour are needed for one batch? So in this case here, we see we're making, we're gonna be using six cups of flour and we're making four batches. So if we draw a similar picture to what we have above here, that means we're gonna make a four batch, little strip like this, so one, two, three and four. Those are my four batches, right? Got that part there. And inside those four batches are six cups of flour. So I'm distributing those six cups into each one of those batches. And I know that right here, this is going to be my one batch. And what I don't know is how many cups are inside of that one batch. So as a multiplication problem, Right. What we're think, talking about here is I have four of these guys here. So it's four times what number is going to get me to six? Four times question mark equals six. Or I can think about six divided by something or divided by four gets me the question mark. Six divided by four will give me what I'm looking for. As always, there's other ways of writing this, right? Because it is multiplication. So the order could be switched around a little bit and you still end up with the right thing. So when I think about six divided by four, 
right? This is saying that I have six cups, oops, six cups divided by four batches. And what that's going to equal is how many cups are in one batch. That's actually what I'm going to end up with is the number of cups per batch, cups per batch right there. So in this case here, we have right now, we know that there's six cups per one batch. And we could write this out like this if you chose to. This would be, think of it like this. This is six, oh, right here. Six, right now we have six cups per four batches, right? That's what we have here, six cups and four batches. So six divided by four is six divided by four. And of course we could reduce six divided by four to three over two. And if we want to write that as a mixed number, we can. We could leave it as three over two for one batch, so three halves of a cup, or we could say it's one and a half cups. Is how many cups of flour are in one batch. All right, let's try another one. See, this is gonna start making sense for you. Number two. To make a half a batch of rolls, it takes five forced cups of flour. How many cups of flour are needed for one batch? Again, still looking for one batch, right? So again, back to our same thing we did before, in terms of multiplication, this is the batch size times some amount is going to give me five fourth cups of flour, right? Or I can think of it as being, um, let's being real quick here, yep. Because I'm looking for a, ba a batch is going to be cups per batch. So I want to find out how much for one batch. That's my goal there. So if I think about, if I have five fourths cups divided by half a batch. That's going to give me my cups per batch. So five fourths divided by half. It's going to give me what I'm looking for there. As a picture here, all right, this is a little different picture. I can think about first a hole. So a number one, right? That's a, a bar of one. Because I'm dealing with a half, I know that half of a batch, here's half of a batch. Just write this down for you real quick. So that's half a batch uses five-fourths of a cup of flour. We're trying to find out, though, how much flour is used for one batch. So already on the diagram, we can see that if this is going to be five-fourths of a cup of flour in here, in the half a batch, I'm going to just simply have another one there, right? Because it's a half, and another half make a whole. And even if I did addition at this point, I could recognize that just with addition, I end up with 10 over 4 as a solution there. So that seems to work out okay. So what we're saying that then is five fourths divided by a half is actually equal to 10 over four, or another way of writing that is two and a half is how many cups I would need there. So take a look here. This is five fourths and five fourths. Five fourths is the same as what? It's the same as one <coughs> and one fourth. So if you think about one and one fourth, if I add one and one fourth to one and one fourth, I end up with one, two, there's my two, and a fourth and a fourth equals a half there. You may also start to recognize that this is happening. If I do five fourths and I multiply instead by the reciprocal here, which is two over one, we end up with 10 over four, don't we? Right, which is still two and a half. So what's happening is here, when I multiply by that reciprocal, I do end up with 10 fourths, which is the same solution there, okay? But again, the idea is that I'm seeing how many cups are in a batch. Let's look at number three. This one says it takes two cups of flour, so we have our first one, two cups of flour, to make two thirds of a batch. How many cups of flour to make one batch? So even though the questions change the order of words around, our goal here is still to find out how many cups of flour for one batch. So we're dividing cups divided by batches. So right now we have two cups divided by what I know is a two-thirds batch. 
and that's going to give me the solution I'm looking for. As a multiplication problem, I again might say it's two-thirds times something gives me two cups there. But we're working with the division stuff, so let's work with this one here. <clears throat> and so once again, I'm going to draw a whole one here, just so we have a whole. <clears throat> and then I'm going to divide it into thirds, because I'm dealing with two-thirds here. right? And I know that I use two cups, two cups, in order to make in this case here, two-thirds of a batch, right? So I use two cups to make two-thirds of a batch. I'm trying to find out how much is in a whole batch. So it's definitely going to be an increase from two, because two only made two-thirds of a batch, and I want to include one more section there. This is, again, one you could do even without a lot of math, right? We can see that we have two cups here going into two sections, which tells me that this is getting one cup and that's one cup to make to two thirds. So we have one third, we have one, and we have one, which makes a two. So if I'm going to have another section added to make a whole, I'm going to have one, two, three. So I should end up with three cups as my solution. Let's take a look at our multiplication, our division problem, and see what's actually happening. So here we have two divided by two thirds, and two divided by two thirds is going to be equal to indeed 3. And the reason we can say that is, again, if you multiply by that reciprocal, so instead of 2 over 3, we write 3 over 2, the 2's are going to cancel out, and you're left with 3 cups as your solution there. All right? All right. So that's kind of the idea of what we're doing with the diagrams there, just to kind of get you, get you going the right way. All right, let's take a look at the next one. It says, one container, one section of highway. Here are three tape diagrams and three descriptions of situations that include questions. Match the diagram to each situation, then use the diagram to help you answer the question. Next, write multiplication and division equations to represent each uh, situation. So, we have diagrams where we have 15 of something, and we can see that it's being broken up into containers, and we have one container and we have half a container. So we know in this one here, we have one and a half containers. So we have a 15, and we also need to have one and a half down here. When we look at this one, we have 15, and we notice we have two full containers there. That's two. And then here we have 15, and instead of one full container, we're dealing right here with this part, which is one third of a full container. I jot those numbers down just so I can take a look at, well, what are the numbers I'm working with on the next side here? What seems to make the most sense? So our first one says Tyler poured 15 cups of water into two equal size bottles and filled each bottle. So we have a 15 cups of water going into two equal size bottles. Now which one seems to go with that? Well, I would say diagram B because we have 15 going into two equal size containers. So let's call that diagram number two. And what's happening here is, in terms of the, um, the division part, I'll do that one first here. Because we're looking for how much water in each bottle. Because we're dealing with the water in each bottle, we want to get it in the terms of water per bottle. So as a division equation, I know I have 15 cups of water divided by two bottles which is going to equal what I'm looking for there. Right? That's like 15 divided by 2. I could then write a multiplication problem by thinking about my bottles times how many is going to equal 15. So I like to start here with the, the division one because that's just what we're talking about. So 15 cups divided by 2 bottles equals how many? All right? And so again, we could do the division problem. We can also just recognize that I'm going to end up with what? 15 divided by 2, like that. 2 goes into 15 7 times, and you have 1 left over, so you end up with 7 and a half. If you don't wait, that was too fast, I'm not sure. Well, let's do this. Let's draw two bottles here. Okay, and let's just put 15 cups in each one. Ready? We have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, oh, and I have 15, I have one left over. 
So everybody gets seven. There's our seven. And what do I do with a whole one? How do I split it into two groups? I cut it in half, so everybody gets a half. Okay, so the next one. This is Kieran poured 15 cups of water into equal sized pitchers and filled one and a half pitchers. All right? Filled one and a half pitchers. How much water was in the full pitcher? So, we're looking for water per pitcher there. So we're looking at here, which one goes with 15 and one and a half? We would say, here's our 15 going into one and a half pitchers right there. So, that's gonna be diagram uh, number one. And what she's, he's doing is he's doing 15 divided by one and a half to find out how much is in one. Multiplication wise, we could do one and a half times something is gonna equal 15. And now we have to work for an answer there. Okay, so what's that gonna be? Well, one and a half can be rewritten as 15 divided by three over two. And again, when we're working with this, we've said we can take the second one here and we can invert it and flip it like so. So we have 15 times two over three. Three goes into 15 five times. So five times two is equal to 10. We have 10 cups. And so our answer here would be 10, All right? And that's the idea. So 15 goes into here in order to make 10. We're gonna say there's 10 inside of there. Now let's think about this. Does that make sense for what we're saying? Is one container have 10 cups? Well, this is gonna be a whole one. The whole one has 10, right? And this one has five. And logically speaking, if that's five and it's only half of a container, if we fill up the whole container, we would have how many? We would have 10, and so every container does get 10, but because we're only filling up one and a half, we just get 10 and five, which is what we have. So we've used one, we've used two, which means what's left is three. So it says that it takes 15 cups of water to fill one third of a pail. How much water is needed to fill one pail? So this is gonna be diagram number three. And what we're doing is we're doing 15, and we are dividing it into thirds to find out what's gonna be inside there uh, in one pail. So as multiplication, we would do one third times something equals 15. And let's work that out there. So 15 divided by one third is multiplied by three over one, and that's gonna equal 45. So our answer here would be 45. And again, going back to your picture, how do we see that? We can see that 15 cups is going into one third, so which means there's 15 here. To find out the whole thing though, we're gonna need an additional 15 and an additional 15 so one whole container will contain the sum of all these, which is 45. All right, so that's the idea on activity number three. Okay. <clears throat> now here we go, and it says here are three more diagrams, situations. Match the diagram to each situation and use the diagram to help you answer the question, and then write the multiplication and division problem uh, to represent the situation as well. So let's see what they're talking about. Turn the page and we have some more. All right. So we can see that in the next one here, we have three quarters of a mile. And we're gonna take that into find out how much is in each section, All right? So we don't know, we have one section here and there's something missing. Here's three quarters of a mile and we have one third of a section that's provided to us here. Another third, another third, another third. This one looks like we're gonna be increasing, right? And here we have the three-fourths of a mile going into one and a half. So much like the last one, this one goes into two because there's two and one-third and a half like so. All right, so those are our pictures just like the last one, same type of numbers. The only number that's different is instead of having, um, was it 10, right? We have three-fourths, three-fourths, three-fourths. So not a major difference, just a number change and we'll be okay. But the same idea. So Priya's class has adopted two equal sections of highway to keep clean, and the combined length is three-fourths of a mile. So she has two sections, and each and the whole length, the combined length is three-fourths. How long is each section? So what we're saying here is that we know she has two equal sections, one and two, right? That's what she has. And the combined length of both of those is three-fourths, 
and we want to know how much is inside of one section. Right? So what we're doing is we're taking the three-fourths of a mile and we're dividing it into the two sections, dividing it by two sections to find out what's going to be left there. And that's going to equal whatever our solution is going to be. That matches diagram number one. Diagram number one. So we're actually really kind of thinking about, okay, what number plus what number will give me three fourths? Now we're thinking about it. So think of it this way. It's two times what number is going to give you three fourths. That's the multiplication way of thinking about this problem. So to solve this, we can do three fourths and multiply by the reciprocal, which is two over one. 2 reduces, goes into, goes into 4 uh, 2 times. So then we're left with 3 over 2, which is the same as. Uh, oh, sorry, I didn't flip it right. Excuse me, back it up there. <laughs> Sometimes you get ahead of yourself there. Don't do that. <laughs> Here we go, let's do 3 over 4. If we're going to flip 2 over 1, it becomes 1 over 2. I'm sure some of you caught that well before I did, right? Nice job. So 3 times 1 is 3, and 4 times 2 is 8. So each section has a value of 3 eighths. So this is 3 eighths plus a 3 eighths. And again, in the additional world, if you have 3 eighths plus 3 eighths, what do you have? You have 6 eighths, and that reduces to uh, 3 fourths, which is what we had there. So our answer in this case is going to be 3 eighths. Number two says Lynn's class has also adopted some highway sections to keep clean. If one and a half sections are three fourths of a mile long, how long is each section? So this is where you have one section and a half of a section, right? That's the one and a half. And we're saying that the whole thing here is three fourths of a mile. So the three fourths is going to be broken up into basically a whole of something and a half of something else. We're trying to figure out how much is in that one section right there. So what we're doing is we are taking the three-fourths again, and we're dividing it by one and a half to find out what's left there. Or the multiplication, it's one and a half times something is going to give me three-fourths. One and a half, as we've seen before, is the same as three over two. And so 3 fourths divided by 3 over 2 is like this. It's 3 fourths multiplied by the reciprocal there. And we end up with 6 over 12. All right, are we doing OK so far? We have 6 over 12, which equals 1 half. So our answer, oh, diagram, sorry. This is diagram number 3. It's going to be half a mile long. All right. And the final one for this activity here. It's going to be a school has adopted a section of highway to keep clean. If one third of the section is three fourths of a mile, how long is a section? So same idea. We have our three fourths and we're dividing it by the one third to find out the length of a whole section. Multiplication wise, it's going to be the one third times something gives me three fourths. Right, so this is the one where we have a section of highway like so, and we know that uh, this is three fourths, this is one third. We're trying to find out how much is the whole thing, right? So, to do that, this is diagram number two, by the way. <laughs> so, we'll do three fourths times the reciprocal, three over one, which is going to equal nine over four, which is going to be the same as two and one-fourth because we're talking about the length divided by the section okay and that's the idea so these ones were all length divided by section or how long per section and that's how we set them all up as um, and the one before was a little different but same kind of idea all right so let's take a look then at your summary for today's lesson Summary, summary. Put my notes real quick. Here we go. So sometimes we know the amount from multiple groups, but we don't know how much is in one group. We can use division to find out. For example, if five people share eight and a half pounds of cherries equally, how many pounds of cherries does each person get? 
So that's kind of the question there. Five people share eight and a half pounds of cherries equally. How many pounds of cherries does each person get? Right? And so we can see that we are looking at, we can represent the situation as multiplication and division by thinking of five times what can get you eight and a half or eight and a half divided by five, right? These are the people we're dividing by. So I have eight and a half pounds of cherries that are going into um, that, going to be shared with five people, okay? So this is my eight and a half pounds of cherries and we wanna know, okay, they each get five people. So the thing we've talked about and saw today happening a lot is that eight and a half divided by five can be written as seven over 12, seven over two divided by five and what we know is this, dividing by five is equivalent to multiplying by one over five. We tend to refer to that as the reciprocal. So that's kind of the key word I was tossing around a little bit today. Um, but just for the sake of the video thing, I know I threw it out there. And it's just something that you did pick up a little bit in fifth grade as well. So I just tossed it in there for you a little bit. Um, but that does mean that we can take an equation like 17 over two divided by five and we can rewrite that as 17 divided by two times one fifth. And that allows us to see that we end up with 17 times one is 17, two times five is 10, and then we can get our solution there. Other times we know about, uh, for a fraction of a group, we don't know the size of the whole group. So we can also use division to figure that out. So the example they gave here is Jada poured five cups of iced tea into two thirds of a pitcher um, how much is going to be in a whole pitcher is my guess. Yep. How much of iced tea fills up the whole pitcher? So that's our two thirds going into a five, and we're going to find out how much fills up a whole pitcher instead. All right. So this one here, when they write this one out, what they're saying here is that I have a. I'm oh, sorry. Let's see right here. We have five cups divided by two thirds, right? So you know everybody's getting something in the two thirds, but this has to then continue to grow a little bit. So the diagram can help us reason about the answer. If two thirds of a pitcher is five cups, then one third of a pitcher is half of five, which is five over two. What does that mean? Okay, this is a little weird the way they wrote this out in your summary here. What we're saying here is that I have one third here. I gotta find out where that's gonna be. So last time, let's pretend that this was a four. Okay, just for a second. If this was a four cups, how many would be in each one of these? Yeah, it'd be two, right? You would take the four and divide it by two and you would say two. Well, it's not four though, is it? What is it? It's five. So I know it's not one you can divide by two, but you can and we could say, well, really it's five divided by two and five divided by two, which means this space is also five divided by two. Does that make sense? Again, think about a whole number, if this, or an even number. If that was four, or if that was 10 even, you would say five, five, five. So it's five divided by two. So as an addition problem, it's five divided by two <coughs> um, times, or I, if it's addition, it's five halves plus five halves plus five halves. As a multiplication, it's five halves times what? Times three, right? That's what's happening. It's five halves three times. So when we think about our equation here, what's happening, we have really five halves times uh, a third, which actually in our case here is going to be equal to 15 over 2, which ends up being our solution. 15 over 2, uh, it works out just fine. So if you look down here, we say two thirds of a pitcher is five, then one third of a pitcher is half of five, which is five over two. Because there are three thirds in one whole, there would be three times five over two three times five over two, or 15 over two cups in one whole pitcher, all right? So this is what they're saying here are the words, but that's what it looks like in terms of math kind of stuff, right? So if again, look at this guy here, if we were to do our flip the second, right, and multiply, and we do five times three over two, what do you end up with? Well, does that look anything like this one? What's the similarity there? Similarity is I have a five, I have a three, I have a five and a three, I'm multiplying them both, and the two is in the denominator for both of them. The difference is that I put the two over here, and the other one has two over there, but that's not a major difference because when I multiply this out, this is five over one, three over one, 
I go straight across and I have 5 times 3 is 15 and 1 times 2 is 2, I end up in the same place both times. Okay? So that's the idea with today's lesson. Hope that helps you out a little bit, okay? You will probably start to find that it's just a little bit easier in terms of math world uh, just to take this fraction here and instead of dividing by that fraction, multiply by the reciprocal. It's a lot faster to do, but we also want you to see why you end up with a number, in this case here, if two goes into five, 15 seven times, you end up with seven and a half, right? So we also want you to see why you end up with a greater number. The reason we have seven and a half is because this is five cups filled two thirds. Our answer should be greater, right? Seven and a half is greater than five. And it should be because we're actually adding more to the whole thing. Whereas in the prior question, we saw that it because I had five people and I had eight and a half pounds, everybody's not going to get eight and a half. I should have something less than, which we did. We had one and seven tenths pound, right? So one and seven tenths is less than the eight and a half. So depending on how you're dividing things up, it's going to change whether you have a bigger number or larger number as part of your solution there. Okay, so take a moment to work on your homework, and then we'll come back together and check in in a few minutes. All right, here we go, it's homework time. For each scenario, use the given tape diagram to help you answer the question, mark up and label the diagrams as needed. So it says May has picked one cup of strawberries for a cake, which is enough for three-fourths of the cake. How many cups does she need for the whole cake? So what we're trying to figure out is um, how many cups of strawberries does she need for the entire cake? So on this tape diagram here, what we can see is that so far, she has one cup of strawberries, right? That's how much she has, which is going to be enough for this much, which is three, one, two, three, of the four, uh, which makes three-fourths of the cake, right? So one cup of strawberries is enough for three-fourths of the cake. She, though, wants to find out, though, how much is going to be needed for the entire cake, right? So basically, we're going to take this one cup here, and already what we know is that one cup can be divided into three equal parts, but then we need to add one more additional equal part to what that's going to be, okay? So what we want to find out here is how many cups, when I take this cup and divide it into what are essentially are thirds, that's going to tell me how many cups are needed for the whole, right? So we're saying that if I take one cup and I divide it by three-fourths of the cake, that's going to tell me how many cups for the whole cake. This is, I want to know cups of strawberries for the whole is what I'm trying to find out. Right now I have one cup for three-fourths of the cake. So I have one cup divided by three-fourths is what I currently have. Now looking at this here, what I do recognize, like I said, is this is, because there's three sections, is equivalent to essentially a third of a cup, a third of a cup, and a third of a cup. The reason we can say that is because we can say one cup broken up into three parts is a third, a third, and a third, which means this other part here would also be, because it's the same portion size, one third of a cup. So just by doing addition, I could say that I have one, two, three, four thirds of a cup to make the whole thing, which is equal to one and one third. Let's come back over here and look at our equation. We have one divided by three fourths, and we talked about if we take the div divided by three-fourths, and we multiply by the reciprocal of that, that also will work. Well, one times four is four, and then this is like one over one, one times three is three, and so we have four-thirds, which is equal to one and one-thirds. So it would take us one and one-thirds cups of strawberries to make the entire cake, right? Let's look at the next one. It says Priya has picked one and a half cups of raspberries, which is enough for, again, three-fourths of the cake, right? So she has one and a half cups of raspberries. That is the same as two times one is two, plus one is three, as three halves of a cup of raspberries. And she's putting that into this part here, which is the three-fourths of the cake again, right? This is my three-fourths. We want to find out how much for the whole thing. So just like the, prior, the previous problem, we're taking our one and a half, and we're dividing it by three-fourths, because that's my my cups of raspberries divided by the part of the, the, the cake amount. And I want to find out how many cups 
for the whole is what I'm trying to figure out. So again, this became 3 over 2 divided by 3 over 4. All right. So I could look at this and think, well, can I do this with the equation? Yes, I can. I can do 3 over 2 multiplied by the reciprocal, which is 4 over 3. All right. And the 3's are going to cancel, so you're left with 4 over 2, which reduces down to 2. So, but let's come back over here. Let's look at the diagram. Here I know that I have one and a half cups of raspberries in three sections. I have essentially, we said three halves is what I have, which is another way of writing it as a half, a half, and a half. One, two, three are my three halves that are in this part right there, right? That's what I'm given. Knowing these are equal sections, that would also be a half. And so if I just add them up, I would have one, two, three, four halves which is the same as 2. So using the diagram we can see that this actually is the correct answer. Let's look at number 2. Tyler painted 9 half square yards of wall area with 3 gallons of paint. How many gallons of paint does it take to paint each square yard of wall? Okay, we're trying to find out how many gallons per square yard of wall. So our goal here is to figure out gallons, oops, off the wall, off the page there, gallons per square yard of wall. Meaning, what I'm given here is I'm given three gallons, and I'm dividing, because that's a division sign, by the number of yards of wall I have, nine divided by two equals a question mark there. So without looking at the question, I'm look, or the A, B in part, what I'm seeing is that we're trying to find out gallons per square yard, which is gallons divided by the square yards I have here. I have three gallons, three, nine and a half square yards there. So let's see what the questions are. Write a multiplication and division equation to represent that. Sure, well the division we just did, three divided by nine over two equals question mark. And as a multiplication, we could say nine over two times the question mark is gonna be equal to three. Draw a diagram to show what that means. Well. Let's figure out, first of all, what is nine over two? Nine over two is the same as four and a half, right? So what we could say here, looking back uh, you know, prior, we made our top number here for three, and then we, well, let's just see. Um, let's go with nine and a half, first of all. Let's go four and a half. Let's make groups of four. One, two, three, Four, and I know it's four and a half, so I'm going to come out here to five. I'm going to draw a little line right there because that's my half of that. So this is four and a half, right? And I can cut it up like this to show that these are halves, which is the same as one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine halves, right? So those are my nine halves, and I want to know how many nine half groups are going to be in three. Well, this is three. We have one, two, three, so three comes out to here. There's my three, right? So how many of them are there? Well, when I look here, I can see that in terms of how many threes are in this section here, I have one, two, three, four, five, six are in there. And there are a total of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine in the whole group. So we have six over nine, which is equivalent to two thirds. That's what I'm seeing in the picture there in the diagram. Let's take a look at the division equation and see what happens. Three divided by nine over two, that becomes three times reciprocal, two over nine. Three times two is six, we get nine in the denominator, six ninths, which is the same as two thirds. So that seems to work out okay. All right, number three. It says after walking a quarter mile home, a quarter mile from home, Han has one is one third of his way to school. What is the distance between his home and school? We're gonna write a multiplication division equation and use a tape diagram to represent that one there. Okay, so um, well on the back side we have a picture of well before I get those to this here real quick. What we're saying is he's one third of the way to where he needs to be. So he is what we're trying to find out the distance between home and school is essentially going to be one fourth divided by one third, right? Equals a question mark. 
let's just draw a picture real quick here. They have one on your next page, all right? So these are my thirds, and we've said that he's gone one-fourth of a mile, and that is one-third of the trip, right? So one-fourth is this much, and this is the whole trip. He's only gone one-third. I guess we could call this the one-third part, sorry, all right? So he's gone one-third, and in that one-third is a one-fourth. So to go the whole trip would be all of these things combined. So I'm looking at that, what we're really looking at as a multiplication problem is one-fourth times three, which is equal to three over four. As a division problem, like we said, we're talking about one-fourth divided by one-third, which is also equal to three-fourths. Okay, so that's what that looks like there. All right, that's the idea. Um, okay, number four, number four. Here's the division equation. Four-fifths divided by two-thirds. Write a multiplication equation that corresponds to it. Sure, let's do that. We could do, we could say um, two-thirds times something we don't know is gonna equal four-fifths. That works out great. And then we're gonna draw a diagram to represent that. Okay, before you draw a diagram, let's take a look here. It's helpful to look at the denominators to know that I have a five and a three, they're not the same. So five times three is 15, that's my least common multiple. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to rewrite this here. I'm gonna write, I have four fifths divided by two thirds, and I want a common denominator. I'm gonna go with 15 as my common denominator, right? So to get the 15 over here, this is times three, so I multiply the top times three, which is 12. To get from this to 15 is times five, so times five times five, two times five is 10. So really I have 12 fifteenths divided by 10 fifteenths by making that least common multiple there so that they have the same denominator, okay? So we have 10 fifteenths, 12 fifteenths like so. So let's then draw a little diagram here, okay? Um, we started with four fifths, which is just fine. Two, three, one. So what I'm doing is I'm drawing this as, as fifths, right? Yeah, try one, two, three, five of those. So those are my fives, and I'm gonna cut them each into thirds. Like so. Okay. And we know that we have, in this case, we have 10 fifteenths. Well, the first numbers are 12 fifteenths here. So let's do our 12 fifteenths. So 12 fifteenths, it's this guy. And we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. All the way out to there is where 12 goes to. And then our 10 fifteenths, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, right there. So that's 10. So in terms of how many groups of 10 15 are in there, we know we have at least one. We have one whole group. But we also have these remaining ones here, right? We have one, two. Now that's going to be two out of what's a group size. Well, a group size is 10. So combine those together and we have one and two tenths or one and one fifth is what we actually have. Now does that work out the same? Well, let's take a look here. If I looked at four fifths divided by two thirds and then I turn that into a four fifths times the reciprocal, three over two, this will reduce to two over one two times three is six, five times one is five, and so now we have six fifths, and six fifths is the same as one and one fifth. So yep, there it is, it works out okay, all right? All right, number five. A set of books that are 1.5 inches wide are being organized on a bookshelf that is 36 inches wide. So we have books that are this wide on a bookshelf that's that wide. How many books can fit on the shelf? Right, so how many of these can fit inside of there? As a multiplication problem, that would be 1.5 times 
uh, something times something will give me 36. As a division problem, we could say 36 divided by 1.5 is gonna tell me how many will fit. So you can draw a diagram if needed. You can solve it out if you want to. It doesn't make a big difference to me which way you wanna do it. So this is 36 divided by 1.5. 1.5 is one and a half. For those of you who like decimals, you could definitely use a decimal, but I like fractions. So two times one is two, times one is three. So this is 36 divided by three over two. That becomes 36 times the reciprocal, two over three. Three goes into 36 12 times, and 12 times two is 24, All right? So use multiplication problem to check it out. So is what is 1.5 times 24? If you plug that into a calculator, what do you find out? It is 36, and you're set to go there. All right, number six. Without calculating, order the expressions based on their values from smallest to largest. We're going from small to large, all right? Notice that they all are 56 divided by some number, right? So in terms of being size, um, right, I'm gonna look for the the smallest number will be the one that is divided by the biggest number, which in this case here is this one. That's our smallest one. The next smallest will be over here. And our largest number will actually be this one here because it's divided by the smallest amount. Okay, the reason that's true is because the dividend is the same for all three. This is the same for all three. And as a result, the larger the divisor the smaller the quotient. So the larger the divisor is gonna be, the smaller the quotient is gonna be. Okay, and that's how we know the difference. There's one more part of this part C, and it says find a number so that 56 divided by n is greater than one but less than seven. So we want a number, so the solution is gonna be greater than one but less than seven. So, so 56 divided by n, we want it to be greater than one but less than seven. So, thinking about this, 56 divided by 56 is gonna be one, okay? Using math facts, 56 divided by eight is gonna be seven. So I want something that's gonna be somewhere in between there, right? So I'm gonna want a number that's somewhere between one and seven, which means that whatever n I choose needs to be between eight and 56. So I could use nine, I could use 10, I could use 23, I want it to be somewhere in between those two numbers. All right, that's it for the day. Have a great day, and we'll see you next time.